Look at all this cheap stuff. Look, cheap, 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 cheap. Elgato's making me sound like a baby chick. But Elgato did something very un-Elgato, and they released some budget equipment, a whole lineup of budget equipment called Neo. We've got a webcam, a stream deck, a light, a USB mic, and a capture card. And Elgato is making this specifically for two different audiences. We've got our starting content creators who are looking to buy a little bit more professional gear without breaking the bank, and then uh, work from homers, people who are on Zoom all the time or Skype. <laughs> I'm just kidding about Skype. But people who are often on conference calls and want to look presentable, look a little bit more professional without breaking the bank. So I got it went with a very clean and friendly design language with this one. So a lot of rounded corners, a lot of smooth matte finishes. Everything is plug and play if you don't want to use their super advanced software. And it's available at Target. So that's a new thing. But is it good? Is, is it a good value? Let's find out. If you like this black and white design, by the way, you should check out our cartographer mouse pad at reallygoodmousepads.com. This particular design has been like 90% of our orders and the black and the white versions have been like 80% of those orders. So yeah, if you're looking for a super clean design and really high quality desk mat, uh, go to reallygoodmousepads.com, check out the cartographer one. I do like this white one. Uh, link in the description. <laughs> but let's start with the Wave Neo, the microphone, the USB microphone over here. There we go, I'm moving everything around. This is $99, which is a good chunk lower than the Wave 3 that we're comparing it to, which is $149, at least at list price. You can usually get it for cheaper right now. You can find it on Amazon for $118, but that's renewed, that's not brand new. It's a cute little mic, very clean design, and this little capacitive mute button that turns red when you tap it and it mutes the microphone. You can also get different color pop filters for this and customize your look, which I think is gonna be the main reason people buy this. Uh, the, colors, the colors are nice, they're like pastel colors. I'll throw them on the screen right here. Like I mentioned before, it can be totally plug and play. Just plug it into your computer and use it. It just works. Or you can go straight into the Wavelink software and have total control over all your audio. It comes with a heavy bass as well as an extender here, so that way you can have it on your desk and still pretty close to your mouth, which I think is probably gonna be the popular way to use it for Zoom call people who don't wanna get like a fancy mic arm. Um, but you can take this thing off and put it on a mic arm if you want to. For the $50 list price difference between this and the Wave 3, what are you getting? Well, you're getting the control dial on the front, so more control right at your fingertips. You're getting compatible accessories like the shock mount and the pop filter here. You also get a slight bump in audio quality with the slightly higher quality parts in there, but honestly, not that much. Here's an example of the Wave Neo, the $99 microphone. and. I feel like I should just tell you that it's midnight and my voice is falling apart. So just take that into consideration. And this is an example of the Elgato Wave 3. And I'm going to use this opportunity to remind you to use Stream Beats next time you go live on Twitch or YouTube. Use the link in the description down below. Grab one of the 15 playlists and go ham. I feel like my voice isn't in the best shape to do an audio comparison test right now. I just got back from NAB and my voice was gone yesterday. But since both of these mics have full access to Elgato's EQ and compression, all their entire audio suite, you can really tweak these to sound pretty much identical. I don't think people are going to choose one of these mics based on the sound quality. I think it's going to be all the other things I mentioned prior. But it's a good sounding mic with a great feature set and when you compare it to the other mics in the industry and their prices, I think this is a great value, as long as you don't care about RGB. Okay, next one, let's talk about the Face Cam Neo. This one is not available yet. Apparently, they're still doing some tweaks to it, so I don't know exactly when its release date's gonna be. But this is a $100 webcam, and there hasn't been a $100 webcam released in a while. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison just for a quick picture quality test between this and the Face Cam Mark II that Elgato just released a month or so ago. So on the left, we got the Face Cam Neo for $99, and on the right, we've got the Face Cam Mark II for $149. And you can already see some pretty significant differences between the two. Now this is an unfinished, unreleased webcam. And so don't take this as gospel for how this webcam is gonna look, but we can get some ideas of kind of what to expect. I will be making a full video on this webcam once the firmware is finished and, and they're ready to release it. So keep an eye out for that and hit the subscribe button while you're down there. It's got a non-removable white braided cable, which by the way, all the cables in this entire set are white and braided, which is nice, but the non-removable about three feet long and USB-C at the end uh, is kind of a bummer. It, it means that if it doesn't reach or if you don't have any available USB-C, you can't just swap out the cable. You'll have to get like an extender for it or an adapter. Obviously, they're trying to make this thing as low cost as they can. And for $100, I don't think that's a huge complaint. I would rather them do that with the cable than 
uh, hurt something with the image quality. Moving on, let's talk about the Key Light Neo. This one I think is actually a really great deal. This thing is $40 cheaper than the Key Light Air, which is a little bit bigger and it comes with a desk stand. This one is much more lightweight and instead of a stand, it comes with a, a monitor. Oh, that's sticky. I didn't realize that was adhesive. Yeah, they really don't want this thing to fall off because this thing goes on top of your monitor. And with the weight, I actually think that's totally doable, especially with that adhesive. But they also fixed a couple things on this light that really bothered me with their previous lights. For example, it's got a bunch of controls right on the front now. Hallelujah. So you got a power button over here. You have a dial over here that controls, you know, why don't we just plug it in? This one, by the way, also comes with USB-A at the end plus a USB extender. I think it's really weird how some of these come with USB-A and some of them come with USB-C. I don't know. There we go. Woo! So dial to control the brightness, then you click it in and it controls the warmth. So you can go from cool to more orange. I don't know if you can tell that on camera. Might be a little too bright. There we go. Orange, cool, anywhere in between. And then you also have these two preset buttons. So you find something you like. Here we got an orange one. I'm gonna hold the preset one button and it's gonna flash let me know that it's saved. And then I can make it bright, make it blue, hold the preset two button and it flashes. And now I can switch back and forth between my two common presets, which is, that's great. You don't have to use the app or a stream deck control. You can just reach up and do it with your fingers like, like an old person. I don't know if I'm just getting old or if you all agree with me, but getting, getting some analog control back is nice. And just so you know, you can also control it with the Stream Deck and the, the phone app and Control Center, all the things that you can on the other ones, but you don't have to now. And you have a choice between, do you want a slightly larger and brighter light or do you want some extra convenience and a better mount with, for the same price? Oh, and then lastly, the power cable on the back is now USB-C. And it comes with this nice little like cable organization removable tool. Well. I had to put it on, I can't really get it off, but no more giant power brick like you had with the last one, which I appreciate that. Next one, Stream Deck. Stream Deck Neo. This is probably my favorite drop in this whole drop. It's an eight button Stream Deck for $99 and they added some neat ideas to this that I hope to see them implement in future Stream Decks. First, it has these two little soft buttons in the corners that are dedicated to switching between pages. That way you don't have to use a whole button as like arrow keys to switch between pages like you used to. So that's great. It saves you two whole buttons and makes it so eight easily becomes 16 or 24 or 32. I remember my times tables. Also, they added this little info bar, which honestly, I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of. Like right now, it gives you the time and tells you what page you're on. And in the Stream Deck app, I saw that there were seven presets for you to choose from, but I don't know if they've opened that up to developers. I hope they did, because I'd love to see things like uh, putting my OBS dropped frames on there to see if I've dropped any frames during a stream, or see how many live viewers I have at any given moment, or you know, like those little, um, those little displays that show you how many subscribers you currently have. I would love that to be on there. I don't know, I feel like there are a million ideas you could do with that, and, and I hope people start making them. I hope people can start making them. A lot like the face cam, I wish this had a removable cable, though I understand that that increases the cost, but I'm surprised Elgato hasn't started putting mounting holes on the back of these yet. A lot of people wanna mount their stream decks, and they haven't started doing that. Surprising, because they put mounting holes on a lot of things. But considering my Stream Deck XL at my setup right now only has six programmed buttons on it, I think an eight button Stream Deck with dedicated page turning buttons, I think lower button count Stream Decks like an eight button one here is, is actually a great option. And then lastly, the one device that I don't actually have is the Game Capture Neo. And Honestly, with this one, I, I think they really just made it to fill out the entire suite of Neo and have a product in every category because this one is not, this one's the least interesting to me. It, it, it is the least revolutionary and it's the least great new value. It's $120 for a 1080 60 capture card, although it can collect, like it can pass through 4K 60 HDR. So it's a very capable capture card, but there's absolutely nothing new about it. And even their HD60X, which has those specs, but can also do variable refresh rate is like $137 on Amazon right now. It's like 18 or $19 more. So I think the audience is gonna pick this up is people who are buying the whole suite and just need something to capture their Switch or a laptop or something, something other than the current modern generation Xbox or PlayStation. I think it'll be useful, but 
if you're just looking for a cheap capture card, it's really nothing special. If you haven't heard, Elgato has done something kind of neat where you can actually plug a capture card into an iPad now, and you can use the iPad as your gaming monitor since the capture cards are so low latency, and you can also record your gameplay at the same time on the same iPad. So something to keep in mind, you don't need this capture card to do that. You just need a UVC capable capture card to do it. And that's it. What are your thoughts? Leave a comment down below. If you don't have any thoughts, just uh, leave your favorite emoji for engagement and then like and subscribe while you're down there thank you for doing that as always happy streaming and i'll see you on really good mousepads.com